Hello, you're watching AAN News and I'm Ingrid Yanara. During this critical moment of debates on immigration reform, a White House plan threatens family reunification, an issue that hurts families mostly of Asian descent. In an unprecedented event at the nation's capital, Asian Pacific Americans finally broke their silence and put a face to the country's struggle for a comprehensive immigration reform bill. They came from 25 states across the nation. Now, <laughs> there's, that, there's that whole stereotype that Asians are quiet. Now, we're, we're not going to be quiet about this, are we? No! For the first time, at least 400 ethnic Americans rallied on Capitol Hill as a unified Asian Pacific American voice. They are silent minority no more. Asian Pacific Americans finally came together in Washington to send a clear message to the White House that today's dysfunctional immigration must be fixed. They called on the protection of immigrants and pushed for reforms that would keep immigrant families together. Uh, we are not asking uh, for more or for less, but what is just and humane? Because right now, Congress must ask, must uh, support, you know, the aspirations of 13 million plus uh, Asian Americans, Filipino Americans among them. Immigrant advocates want lawmakers to junk a White House proposal that would scrap family-based visa categories. If passed, married and unmarried children of immigrants as well as their siblings can no longer be petitioned. How can you have immigration reform if you put a barrier on members of family to be reunified? I think it's, it's terrible. I think that we should oppose that and we, they need to know that Family reunification needs to be part of our immigration system. This is a country that values families and that we have to be loud and tell the White House that it is not acceptable that family reunification must be included in any kind of comprehensive immigration reform. From the East Coast to the West Coast, Asian Americans call on their fellow Asian Americans to keep a united stand against immigration reforms that will break families apart. Don Tagala. AAN News. During the historic National Mobilization Blitz, Asian Pacific Americans not only rallied on Capitol Hill, they sent their sentiments to the members of Congress and Senate with a personal touch. It was a day of protest and marches for many immigrant advocates across the nation. But for the APA mobilization in Washington, D.C., it was a day to visit their legislators to lobby for a comprehensive immigration reform. APA's lobbying efforts proved to be not only beneficial for the immigration movement, but it also served as a learning experience for the Asian Pacific American community members. But today, and from now on, we are united with one board for better and humane and workable uh, immigration reform. Because, you know, I think we are here for, for more than that. I think we are here to educate the America, to, to educate the police, uh, policy makers, you know, how we should treat other human beings. The APA national mobilization also proved that the nation's immigration crisis cuts through various ethnicities and not just one. My district is made up of 54% of the people are immigrants or children of immigrants. That is the strength of my district. That is not a weakness, that is a strength. And that is what has, has made our country great. And so I'm so glad that you're here right now to hopefully go talk to your members of Congress, make them understand this isn't just about one ethnic group. Many people think of this only as, uh, as immigrants from Mexico, and we welcome them as well, but it's from people all around the world. And your faces, your faces and your voices are so important today. So thank you very much for being part of this struggle. Because we're in it together, we're in the same boat. You put a hole in the front part of the boat, the boat sinks. So we're going to be plugging up all these holes and making sure that our legislators listen to us. November 6th, November 7th, they heard the message. It was about immigration. It was about Iraqi. Today, it's about immigration. 
Today it's about you. Today it's about our families and the families we want to reunify with. So we have great legislators here. We have great colleagues and allies who want to do the right thing. There are those who still need education. So this is what you're all about. So it's, you're really going to help us get this bill through and put this in front of um, the man who lives at, in the White House. I think that he may. He may sign it. He says he wants to see something. He really needs something for a legacy. And this will be a good one for him to have. According to immigrant groups, marching and lobbying come hand in hand. Together, they are important steps so that legislators will listen to their constituents and pass a true comprehensive immigration reform by the end of the year. Don Tagala, AAN News. Immigration rallies also took place in other states that Tuesday. Groups rallied in Detroit, New York, Phoenix, Denver, and Los Angeles. In Chicago, more than 100,000 protesters took to the streets, making it the largest immigration rally in the country that day. <laughs> While Asian Americans joined hands lobbying their representatives in D.C., Mayor Daley joined the crowd in Chicago last Tuesday calling for a comprehensive immigration reform, a key term that immigrant support groups often use. And when talking about an immigration reform, the White House plan that called for the creation of Y and Z visas is not what these groups had in mind. They want immigration laws that reunite immigrant families, stop raids and deportation, and create a way for illegal residents to become American citizens. Immigrant advocacy groups said this is a very important and historical time because lawmakers will begin hammering out a plan to handle the 12 million undocumented immigrants this year. Out of that 12 million, 400,000 live in Chicago. Before Chicago immigrants marched through the city Tuesday, a diverse group of immigrants from the southwest side gathered in the church. They want Congress to enact a comprehensive immigration reform. Don Tagala has more. The Illinois Coalition for Immigrant and Refugee Rights, along with organizations in Southwest Chicago's district, held a unity summit recently. The summit is a showcase of the immigrant community's strength to urge legislators to listen to their constituents' voices and push for comprehensive immigration reform. And it's time, it's time. There are three and a half million people waiting, three and a half million people waiting to come and be reunited with their families. We're talking about mothers and brothers, sisters, husbands, children. It is time to end the wait for the three and a half million that are coming to be reunited, should be reunited today here in the United States. At least a thousand immigrants gathered at the St. Mary's Star of the Sea Church where they shared personal stories. Leaders and advocates also urge elected representatives to show their support for a real solution for the millions of undocumented workers and families across the nation. We are here today to send a powerful message that we represent a mass movement in the U.S. for equality for all immigrants. We are here today 1,400 strong with a huge challenge in front of us. The time is now to pass driver's certificates in Springfield and comprehensive immigration reform in Washington, D.C. After the summit, hundreds trooped to Congressman Lipinski's office to demand that he hears their voices and support solutions for the millions of hard-working immigrants around the country. Don Tagala, AAN News. Archaeologists have discovered a cave full of Buddha paintings dating back to at least the 12th century. A local shepherd in Nepal stumbled across these ancient relics while looking for shelter from the rain a few years ago, and recently tipped off experts to this amazing discovery. The team of Nepalese, Italian and American archaeologists and art scholars plan to collect and catalog this discovery. They refuse to disclose the exact location of the cave so that these paintings will go undisturbed. 
A new organization aimed at developing business relations between the U.S. and Asia launched last weekend in New York City. The U.S. Asian Business Council, or USABC, hopes to promote both U.S. and Asian businesses at home and abroad. The council was created by Jimmy Lee, former executive director of the White House Initiative on the APA Community and other major corporations. USABC maintains regional offices in LA, Houston, Washington, D.C., and Chicago. We continue our special coverage on Washington, D.C. This time, we go into that Chinatown where a big change is taking place. With merely 17,000 Asian American residents, the only thing visibly Asian about Washington, D.C. is its Chinatown. As soon as you get off the subway, you'll see a familiar sight. About 20 years ago, the city dedicated this friendship archway, a traditional Chinese gate, much like what we have in Chicago. The $1 million public artwork is 60 feet high with 7,000 tiles designed in the style of the Ming and Qing dynasties. It is the largest Chinese archway in the world. You'll also see the regular sites of Chinese and ethnic restaurants offering their lunch and dinner specials. But Washington, D.C.'s Chinatown has something that we in Chicago don't have. A specialized Asian police unit that handles Asian-American residents of D.C. Other police departments in the metropolitan area do not have the um, Asian assignment. So I believe Washington, D.C. is a lucky city that has this unit to provide a service to the um, Asian community. The Asian Liaison Unit was created by local Chinese community leaders a few years back for one reason. There were a lot of crime in Chinatown in 1996, and there's a lack of trust and um, lack of um, communication among the Asian community and the um, D.C. Police Department. But as time goes by... We're losing manpower. And they fear their Chinatown is losing its character. It, it is, it's, it's a different sort of Chinatown. It's kind of diminishing in size. The only Chinese grocery store recently closed down and sold their space to an Italian restaurant. Unlike Chicago, Washington's Chinatown is located in the heart of downtown. Land here can cost up to $1,000 per square feet, a reason why Chinese businesses are moving out while national chain stores are moving in. Problem was that um, the owners of the shops, their, I guess their children or the younger generations didn't want to be involved in taking over the business. Um, and so if they're getting uh, prime prices, prime, prime prices for their real estate, they're, they're going to sell their business and retire. Um, so the problem is in, in the younger generation and that they have to kind of step up and help their family businesses. When we come back, find out what Chinese residents in D.C. are doing to revive a dying legacy, why Japanese Americans are opening old wounds, and don't miss out on what's in bloom. All up next on AAN. Human skulls were discovered in a man's Bucktown apartment, one boiling in a pot. But authorities said charges aren't likely. Police said it doesn't seem like anything is wrong. The 26-year-old owner of the skulls makes anatomical models for a living and is using them for medical purposes. Police searched the apartment after a call from a customer who wanted to buy a mannequin, saw the skulls on the porch, and inside a boiling pot. The skulls were turned over to the Cook County's medical examiner's office. The owner told the police that those skulls were legally imported from China. An exhibit on the north side reveals what many Japanese Americans have kept secret for a long time. For decades, history books didn't write about what our fellow Asian Americans have gone through during the wars in the 1940s. Our Don Tagala tells us more of this little-known story about the Japanese migration to the U.S. On its 60th anniversary, the Japanese American Service Committee, or JASC, showed its roots through an exhibit called Origins of Now, Rebuilding Community. This is an ambitious and groundbreaking exhibit featuring historical photographs and contemporary artworks that explore the forcible internment of Japanese and Japanese Americans during World War II. The exhibit also shows the untold post-war resettlement of 30,000 Japanese Americans to Chicago. With the 60th anniversary coming up, we thought, oh, this would be a, a wonderful opportunity to 
uh, present our story about how the Japanese American community was formed here in Chicago and through using what we had out of the Legacy Center. And um, then the idea expanded into talking more, not just about how the Japanese American Service Committee helped the community, but how the community rebuilt and, and formed after uh, World War II. In honor of the resettlers, former Transportation Secretary Norman Mineta graced the occasion as a special celebrity guest speaker. It really is a great uh, honor for me to be here. And to see this exhibit, it um, really brought a lot of um, memories back about, uh, about our own experiences. The exhibit links today's Japanese Americans in Chicago to their culture's past. They're there's so many families that lost uh, a lot of their personal items because they had to leave a lot behind them when they went um, into the camps. And um, so at least through being able to share others' photographs and documents, then it can help them, um, people who don't have those themselves, it can help them to uh, remember and also retain their legacy and their, their sense of connection to their previous generation. The exhibit also provides opportunity for younger generation Japanese Americans to learn about their culture's history. Uh, it's, it's very important to have this type of exhibit because um, just like any kind of traumatic situation, a lot of the uh, people who went through the internment didn't want to talk about it after the war. They just wanted to put it behind them. They wanted to move forward and build new lives. And so a lot of that third generation um, growing up in Chicago didn't hear anything about what happened to their parents during the war. The Origins of Now is open to the public and will run until the end of June at the Japanese American Service Center located at 4427 North Clark Street. For more information, you may call 773-275-0097 or you may visit their website at www.jasc-chicago.org. Don Tagala, AAN News. A $65 million lawsuit over a pair of pants has driven a South Korean dry cleaner almost out of the country. A Washington State Administrative Law Judge is suing a mom-and-pop dry cleaning business for allegedly losing a pair of his pants. First, the judge demanded the cost of the full suit at $1,000. The Chungs, who owned the dry cleaning business, found the missing pants, but since then, the judge refused settlements from the Korean family. Instead, he wants the Chungs to pay for the price of driving to a dry cleaner further away for the next 10 years. All of that amounts to a whopping $65 million. The family is considering moving back to South Korea because the lawsuit has caused so much mental and financial anguish. History has it that only those with a lot of green could afford them. Now, all it takes is a green thumb to grow orchids at home. The Illinois Orchid Society hosted an annual show at the Chicago Botanic Garden where thousands of orchid fans flocked the scene. This flower has become a blooming business as more people are drawn to its beauty. We spoke to one man from Thailand who found love in what he does for a living. Uh, we start here in 1991 as a hobby and then it keep going and then it turned out to be a business. Yeah. In 1991, you know, I see at that time not too many people uh, interested in orchid, you know. But uh, year after year, you see a lot more people. They can clone it. They can do a tissue culture. So the price is 
come down a lot. You know, it used to be like a some orchid you have to spend thousand, four or five thousand dollars. Now the price is uh, probably thirty or forty dollars. Oh, it can live forever. Yes, it's, uh, as long as you take it, take care of them good. You know, it can live for a long, long time. You know, it's like a. Some of them you can divide it, you know, from one plant into two plants, four plants, six plants. So it's like a, it, it, it can live forever. the people kill it because they overwater it. KBC AAN News reaches all of Chicago land, different Asian communities, China, Japan, Vietnam, India, Thailand, Korea, Indonesia, and more. We are the link of Asian American viewers and the source for your Asian information, covering events, news, and issues. Be a part of Chicago's only Asian American programming. Advertise your business with KBC's AAN News. Thank you for choosing AAN, your Asian news leader. Catch our rebroadcast Tuesday mornings at 8 and tune in next Monday. NBC News anchor Nesita Kwan talks on what race has to do in the Virginia Tech massacre. If you have any questions about our show or have story ideas, write us at aan41chicago at aol.com. I'm Ingrid Yanada. Thanks for watching.